But the one thing I realized is no matter who you think you're trying to become to, to fit in, someone is still not gonna like you. You literally cannot make everybody happy, so you might as well just be yourself. And if they don't mess with you, then oh the hell well. Like if it's meant for you, you will walk through that door. Today on Be The Model, we introduce fashion queen and diva, celebrity icon and muse, we bring you Shawnee, the model. Hola, me llamo Shawnee, and I am coming to you from beautiful Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And you are tuned in into the very first remote episode of Be The Model podcast. Welcome! Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the 12 questions you all asked me to get to know me a little bit better. Let's do this. Question number one, tell us where you're from, who you are, and what is it that you do? My name is Shawnee, but I go by Ravishing Brown on social media. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, piece up eight town down all day, every day. And I am a content creator and a muse. Question number two, what inspired you to do modeling? Honestly, nothing. People kept coming up to me asking me, was I a model? Random people all the time, all day, every day. And I was just like, oh, well maybe I should try my hand in this. And that's literally how I got started modeling. Wait, let me back y'all back. Cause this video, I need fresh my teeth. Yeah, it is eight o'clock in the morning and I'm a little too hype. I know y'all probably like, I got crust in my eye. <laughs> Get your life. Okay, if you are new here, uh, hit the subscribe button, turn on post notifications on and go tell all your family members to subscribe to my channel. Now that's out the way, what y'all up to? Okay, so I'm about to head to the dentist. The nose goes, I don't, I'm about to head to the dentist. And then I'm meeting up with a homegirl. We're gonna work out, then we're gonna get drank. Anyways, let's just get the day going, okay? Let's do it. What is your background and culture? Okay, look, I was born in Mobile, Alabama, raised in Atlanta, Georgia, went to college in Florida, moved to Los Angeles, and now I'm in Mexico. So I like to say I'm a global citizen, okay? Home is wherever I lay my head. I'm a wildflower, I have a gypsy soul and a hippie heart. So in the core of my being, I'm a Southern woman, a proud Southern woman at that, okay, period. Question number four, did you face many obstacles on your journey? I would say I faced two, one being mental, um, I just have to get out my head. I feel like so many people believe in me and sometimes I don't believe in me. So I'm just like, girl, like you're dope. Like you need to own that shit. So I just, sometimes you just gotta get out your own way. We tend to overthink things when life can all be so simple. You know, Lauren Hill, you know, she really said that. But yeah, I just gotta get out my own way sometimes. So I'm working through my kings and I definitely think that I'm still on the right path to become the woman I wanna be in this lifetime, okay? And the second obstacle I would say was just dealing with unprofessional people. Because I mostly do boudoir modeling, which is pretty much nude modeling, but classy, um, a lot of photographers are freaking purged. So you have to be conscientious on who you decide to shoot with. So I like to go to their page, assess their work, see what models they work with. If they're tagged, I'll shoot them a DM like, girl, how was your experience working with him? And you know, just be more conscientious and more safe about the people I work with. Because I've definitely been in two situations where a photographer tried to come on to me and it was quite scary. And it set me down for about a year, but then my homie was like, you need to start back modeling. Like, you're too dope to not do it. And then I'm so glad I did because I genuinely enjoy creating art. Question number five. What model or artist do you look up to? Okay, I don't look up to any models because I did kind of get into this just based off of other people telling me I should try, but I do look up to Cardi B. And I look up to Cardi B because she is authentically herself in any environment. And people have always told me that like, 
you're always yourself. Like, I fucks with that. So that's why a lot of people mess with me because I keep it real. So to see somebody like Cardi B come from rags and rise to riches and never switch up, like, I admire that so much because I know that money can change you. Um, you know, elevating and being in rooms with people who got old money, all that can change you. You might feel the need to, like, portray yourself in a certain way. But Cardi was like, nah. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. And it didn't stop the bags. This is still collecting the coin. Okay? So, I really respect that. Question number six. Have you faced any issues in the industry being a black woman? Not at all. People hit me up all the time asking them to work and, you know, collab and create. So, I would say no. Question number eight. If you can go back and tell your younger self advice on life, love, and relations, what would you tell her? Accept yourself as you are. I feel like a bulk of my life, I try to be accepted by people and like maybe if I act this way, they'll accept me. Or maybe if I buy this or look like this or do that, people will accept me. But the one thing I realized is no matter who you think you're trying to become to, to fit in, someone is still not going to like you. You literally cannot make everybody happy. So you might as well just be yourself. And if they don't mess with you, then oh the hell well. Like if it's meant for you, you will walk through that door. If that friend is meant to be in your life, then they gonna accept you for you. You should never have to feel the need to put on a persona. Sorry. Put on a persona to keep people around or to get an opportunity. That just means it wasn't meant for you. Period. Accept it, move on, another door will open, okay? Next question. What are your own rules to success? I would say, Beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. And I hope I'm not sounding redundant, but that's just the biggest life lesson I've learned myself is that showing up as yourself is good enough. You don't have to be anybody else other than yourself. And it's hella exhausting portraying yourself as not yourself, you know? It's hella exhausting because if you do it consistently enough, people are gonna always expect you to show up as that person. And if you can never walk in rooms and be yourself, like, is that success actually genuine? Are the connections you're making real, true? Probably not. Probably not. So I would tell my younger self, just be okay with who you are. Be okay with how your body looks. Because I've also dealt with a lot of body issues. Like, you know, in the black community, we really praise thick women. And I've always been slim. I've always been skinny. And it's, I'm always going to be this way. So I had to accept my body. I had to accept my look accept that this is just who I am and it's nothing I can change and if you don't want to fuck with me because of whatever then be gone I'm gonna be good regardless okay so the next question is if you can go back and tell your younger self advice on life love and relationships what would you tell her oh that was trying to get deep okay um younger self I would say you are good enough and don't sweat the small stuff. Man, my anxiety be getting the worst of me sometimes. And a lot of stuff I look back on, I'm like, why did I stress that? Like I'm standing right now today, which means I'm strong enough to make it through. So there was no need to cry and stress about the outcome when I knew all along I would be good, you know? So I would tell her to chill the hell out, girl. You're going to be straight and just, you know, accept yourself for who you are. Don't seek approval or validation from outside sources. You have everything you need on inside. Trust that gut feeling. I feel like we all tend to ignore that feeling sometimes, but it never leads us astray. Never. So I would tell her that. Question number nine. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Okay, in 10 years. I'll be 41 years old because right now I'm 31. So hopefully I'm married to my partner in crime, my road dog, my bestie, also known as a husband. And we have a kid or two, bought a house on a lot of land. We got a big ass garden growing herbs, vegetables and fruits. And we're successful. I want a restaurant group with four different restaurants and Hopefully that's popping. I want to be a vibe curator. I want people to come to my restaurants and feel good. I want them to come and look good and meet other people and network, you know? So hopefully that's popping. And hopefully, ain't no hopefully. This body's still going to be banging because 
Yeah, we ain't losing it. Okay, so I'm gonna be fine, successful, and happy. Period. So that's where I'm gonna be in 10 years. Question number 10. What do you want your legacy to be? And how do you want to be remembered? I want to be a humanitarian. I want to be known as someone who always had good energy and positive vibes. Someone who was everybody's friend and was welcoming. I want to be someone who gives back to her community. I want them to remember me as someone who was generous, even in her success, always was generous and was always humble and remembered where she came from. So that would be my legacy. Where can we follow you and see your work and new material? Listen, I'm probably gonna be the easiest social media person you get to know. I'm literally ravishing brown on everything, on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube. My website is ravishingbrown.com and my Etsy shop, shop with me on Etsy, is ravishing brown. I'm consistent, okay? One thing about me is I'm always show up as myself and I'm gonna be consistent, okay? You can count on that with me, so I'm pretty easy follow. If you Google that, all my stuff should come up, okay? Last and final question. What does be the model mean to you? Be the model means to me, walk in your life. Walk confidently in your life. Show up in every room as yourself. Show up professional, be prepared, be friendly, be positive. Just give your all in any opportunity or gig that is passed along your way. Walk out of rooms and have people talking about you in a good way. Have them say, oh, I wanna work with that person again. Oh man, their energy was infectious, you know? So be the model means to me is to just walk like you are your brand because you are. You are representing your brand every time you step into a room. So own it. Show them your customer service skills, okay? <laughs> Make them want to book you for every gig. Make them want to tell the next person to book you. That's what Be The Model means to me. Oh my God, that was the last question, y'all. So, oh my God. Thank you for sitting down and taking a moment to get to know little old me. I really do appreciate being the first model to kick this series off. This is pretty freaking awesome and I'm super grateful for the opportunity. So, if you haven't already, follow me on social media at Rev Shabrell. And make sure you're keeping up with Be The Model Podcast, okay? I'm signing off from beautiful, rainy Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Peace. No, I'm still a <laughs>